what is good everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of the stay attached podcast we are joined by the one the only dante aka sib formerly part of new york subliners now a part of cloud nine he's a two-time call of duty champion one of the most talented players in the game and honestly the new generation of a, a superstar one of the new superstars that we have so dante appreciate you taking the time and joining us today how you doing good how are you you know happy to be on here just finished some scrims so yes sir Yes, sir. Getting ready for EWC, right? Yes, yeah, sir. So are you? Yeah, yeah. Today was the day off. Today was the day off. So we're getting some content done. But of course, it's back to the grind tomorrow. Back to the grind yes, tomorrow. Sir. But how are scrims looking today? Were you frying? No. <sighs> I feel like my controller was broken. No, not the controller. View. That's the worst. Yeah, like, you know, it's like I'm trying to shoot straight, but it's just not working. So, you know, <laughs> looking to bounce back tomorrow. It's all fine. Here's yeah, it happens. They have those days where your controller is just messed up. That's why yeah. I got, I, sometimes I have a practice controller. Then I have my tournament controller. I only touch the tournament controller when it needs to be used. Really? The practice controller, sometimes I use it, but it also depends who we're scrimming. You know, we're playing some top teams. I'm like, all right, let me bust up my good controller for this one. I um, need to hop on that way, I'll be honest. Low key, because these controllers, they be messing up quick. So I try to take the good care. When it's in like at the perfect state, I try to keep it like that. Yeah. I try to keep it like that. But enough about me. We, we're here to talk about you. So uh, what would you say has been like your favorite match in Call of Duty that you've played in your career? My favorite match? Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm, I would probably have to say probably versus Optic. Optic? Which one? Versus, you played Optic a couple Optic times. Optic champs last year. Last year. Okay, because you played Optic yeah. like every champs. Yeah. <laughs> you knocked uh, him out of the two champs before. Yeah. La last year was the best though. Well, not this year, but last well, yeah. year was the best since, you know, I set them home. MW2, whatever, MW2 but, season, yeah, right? MW2 season. Yeah. Um, that would have to be probably... Was my favorite yeah well i i know you did a uh, 1v3 them <laughs> to close it ace. out 1v3 with the ace, ace with the ace. ace in there yeah so i could definitely see that being at champs like i only imagine the like adrenaline the hype everything coursing through your body right there when you when you did that like, that must have been insane dope yeah it was i think it was a lot more than dope i'll be honest it was very <laughs> a very very good feeling just because of the rivalry we had with that team yeah obviously and we were talking shit to each other in scrims a lot and stuff. And they got the best of me the last time we played them. So it felt good to really get them when it mattered. Of course. Of course. And um, you've had a couple of solid teams so far. I mean, since you've been a pro, you've been on Seattle Surge, mm -hmm. New York Subliners. Who would you say has been the teammate you've learned the most from? And who would you say has been like your most talented teammate you've played with? Um, probably learned the most from a team with Seattle. Mm. And I would probably say that just because of the fact that I was a new, um, new player. Yeah. And I wasn't really molded yet at all, and I didn't really know um, what it really took to actually be um, the best. Yeah. Or actually, what I didn't know what it, what it really took to win. So I think that's where I learned the most from was from that Seattle team. And then obviously, I mean, most talented player. I mean, I'm gonna have to give it to Hydra. So. Paco. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely a very talented player. Yeah. Definitely a very talented player. And I know um, being on New York, they have kind of like a crazy schedule from what we've heard. But what's like a daily schedule for you like on like a scrim day or even a match day? Like what, what happens? When does it start? When does it end? How does it all go? Yeah, uh, practices are more, a little more consistent compared to match day just because obviously we play at different times. Yeah, of course. Each time. So you really don't know what your day is really going to look like. But um for the most part i mean waking up waking up pretty early say about 9 a.m every day um depending on if we have three scrims or not it will kind of de determine when i go to the gym so yeah if we do have a long day then i'll probably go to the gym in the morning because i definitely know that if i'm getting the only scrims at 7 or 8 p.m i mean i think i'm just gonna have to decompress for the rest of the night yeah. but um yeah and then as far as for match days i think it's um a lot more Obviously, you take it a lot more serious. It's a lot yeah, more um, strict. So like, we have team breakfast every morning on match day. We wake up pretty early, and then we go all go to the venue together. We study together, all that stuff. So I think um, it's my routine on match day, especially like um, I think the most and one of the most important things for at least for my um, routine is definitely that the sh it depend depending on if I take a shower the morning of or the night before. <laughs> that's the biggest is, thing. Yeah, whatever it is, I think that's that that shower, that that 
that bathing period before you play, if, if it's the night before or the morning, yeah. I think it's the most important because that's when, like, you wake up and you're already thinking about the game. You're already locked in. Like, it's just, like, it's just it, – it's way better. Like I, I feel like that's like a, such a pivotal moment in yeah. my mindset, at least. Especially like, um, if I have an early day, for example, like Champ Sunday, they have to be there hella early. Of course, yeah, you have to be there, right? Yeah, like I'll, I'll shower the night before so I can get a little bit extra sleep, and then I'll just yeah. obviously like all I have to do is skincare routine and yeah, brush my teeth and all that stuff, and then I'm good to go instead of having to take an hour shower. Like it just it just saves an extra hour. So yeah, but I I just I honestly think that that shower is the for, for most players, is a, is a pivotal moment just because, like, you're already, like, I mean, you're, you're playing music. Like, you're already thinking about Yeah, you're vibing you're out have, already. Yeah, you're, like, you know getting I mean? locked so in. Think, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think I, the shower is the most. Like, if there was no shower, I'd be chalked. But. <laughs> Good thing we have showers. Good thing yeah. we have showers. Wait, actually, there's a special guest behind you. For those that are watching the video, can you introduce to uh, who who that pretty lady is? Uh, her name is Luna. Luna. She's big now. She's a big girl now. She's getting big. How old is uh, Luna? She's a year and a half. Year and a half. Okay, still Turned a puppy. One in February. Yep. Turned one in February. She's a half Labrador Retriever and half Doberman. Um, she's pretty needy, but just like <laughs> every woman, every girl is needy. So it just yeah. comes with the price, you know. Yeah. She's she's sitting there. You're just trying to you know do your interview, and she needs some pets. So listen, yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna hold you back on Petaluna. Yeah. She's so she's calm though. Is she always yeah. this calm, or does she get yeah, a little she, crazy sometimes? She's always calm. She just really she cries more than not though, cause she's wants to be yeah, of course like she wants to love day. wants the attention she wants all damn fucking day <laughs> and then when she's gonna stop she's gonna try and start pawing yeah. you again yeah. she's like wait where my where where did my rubs go where my scratches yeah. go all the time <laughs> but i know you mentioned the uh the gym um and like the importance of working out how has that been like a consistent thing throughout your life or like the older you've gotten like the more you've really focused on the gym uh I, when i was um <clears throat> younger i'd never liked the gym at all um, I was always a runner. Yeah. So um, I've always ran long distance sprints. So the gym was never like I, I hated the gym. Honestly, I hated the gym until until right after high school. That's when I kind of realized like you kind of step into the real world and like kind of really look. You really put it in perspective, and I'm yeah. just like, wow, like I really hate the way I look. Like you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I need, I need something on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, you need to so, bulk up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So like once that kind of hit me, I really got invested in hitting the gym. Um, been going to the gym since 2020, 2021. About three years, three yeah. or four years of going to the gym. Um, very consistent. Um, up until this year. Um, as far as going to the gym, um, this year is like. Joining a new team, different schedule, um, different, uh, I would say, like, the stress of the environment. Oh, yeah, a it's, a new, it's a new environment. Well. You have to learn yeah. it. Like, it's it's all, it's not familiar, so it's, like, yeah. a, a learning process for sure. Right. So, I think this year is the only year that I've been inconsistent in the gym. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's just, uh, after high school, I started working out a lot. I love working out. Um even now like even if i'm not consistent I, I obviously i still try to be yeah or whatnot but um that's definitely like my goal is just to do as best as i can and stay consistent and, and i think that um before um i would get very very upset with myself with not going to the gym but i think on top of um team dinners and team activities and also screaming two to three times a day i think i've learned to kind of like give myself a break a little bit yeah. even though that obviously it's ideal going to the gym every day regardless of what is happening during your daily schedules or whatever but i think um just adding that extra pressure on yourself yeah it isn't good really because, the issues, yeah i think it just it, it tends to harm you more than not yeah it can stress you out a little too much get you unfocused yeah. from your thing so it's good you know you go three maybe yeah. four times a week that's still yeah. great as well that's yeah. still great as well it's very very easy to get overwhelmed and yeah is you, you take one step back and you, you get mad at yourself for taking one step back you end up taking three yeah so i think that's the most important thing is just keeping a balance and just giving yourself a break because shit is not not easy yeah and so you said you like were a runner growing up was there like any other sports you played uh just cross country track soccer and then a Occasionally, I played basketball. Like all, all my friends, I like, played football and basketball. I was the only one of the few um, people out of my friends that played soccer. So, um, in order to you know 
kind of fit in not really fit in but just kind of like be a part yeah of course be a part of a team playing, with your friends yeah seven on seven and stuff, so i know I've always just played i know your seattle team uh they used to you guys used to play some 2v2s you accuracy mac pred ag yeah. um yeah. How would those go? Like, who who would you if you had to rank them best to worst? Who would you rank it? I'm definitely the best, <laughs> and then I would say AG, and then Mac, and then definitely Lamar. Uh, Lamar's, Lamar's last, definitely bottom, <laughs> bottom of the barrel. So I have to you know, put him on my back a little bit. Oh, okay, that was your teammate. Yeah, it's yeah. always me, me and Lamar versus AG and Mac, and and who would win more often? You could you could be honest. Me and, me and Lamar. So you were just like Lamar. the hard carry like that. Hard carrying, and then like whenever I would. Hard to carry to a point they have to double team you now to give it to Lamar and hope he makes it. <laughs> you're like Lamar, you're wide open. Yeah, wide open. You have like, to I mean, make something yeah, at this point. Right. We've been right. practicing Anything. every day. Just make Anything. something. <laughs> yeah. Uh what was your first uh call of duty you, you ever played? COD two. COD two. Damn, how old were you? You're you're Probably young right now. Two, four? Four? Yeah. Three, what were you doing four. four years old playing Call of Duty? Uh, my cousins asked me if I wanted to play, so I started playing um it was on the I believe it was the PS two. Hmm. PS2, I played um, COD 2. Uh, it was pretty fun. It was very hard. Obviously, I was really, really was I mean, a kid. But, I don't even remember being four years um, old. So I can only imagine yeah. playing a video game at four years old, it feels like. Yeah, I, I was doing that, and I also played a lot of Halo growing up. Played a lot of Halo growing up. was an Xbox kid, and then I got banned for burning discs. So um, no I way. Went, to, went to PlayStation. <laughs> yeah. Went to PS3 and started that. But yeah, COD 2, played COD 4 a little bit. Um, grinded War at War. War at War was probably the first cut I actually grinded. War yeah, that game War, was I fun. It was first cut I grinded, and I was like fucking seven or some shit, just, just dropping attack dogs over and over and over <laughs> in every lobby. So, yeah, that was fun. And then, when did you learn about like competitive Call of Duty? Um, MW3. Okay. I played my first. Wait, did MW3 come up before Black Ops One or? or no, nah, it was after. After it was okay, after. Black Ops One. It was Black Ops One. So uh, before I used to do competitive sniping, I did competitive sniping and then um, I did like clan wars and stuff as yeah. well. So then I was playing pubs and one of these people in the pub lobby just kind of like added me and thought I was good. And he was like, hey, like make a game battles account. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> You're like, what well, game battles was that? Yeah. I was like, what is this? And they have to like do all this data burst. Like, yeah. Mail stuff. And I'm like. <laughs> I don't you're... even, I don't know yeah. what's going on. I put my mom on the mic, like, you know what I mean? So She's like, what? Started, Game battles? Yeah, right. So, Black Ops 1 is when I started um, learning, actually learning about competitive while doing comp sniping as well. And then it wasn't really until, I'd say, World War Two, where I actually thought that, okay, like, this is something I can actually really take seriously. Yeah, I always like watch. I mean, I even watched you growing up as well. I watched. Uh, hey, uh, my was, guy, my all guy. The, all the old, old vets that are not here anymore. Hey, there's um, a couple that are still here though. Yeah. There's a couple still holding it down. Yeah, still holding it down. You know, come on I mean? now. Like the, I'm like Anthony Edwards. I got some Steph Curry. We got, we got we, LeBron retired, so you know. But like, we still, we still got some people in here. But, um, yeah, it wasn't until really like Black Ops One, I really, really um. That's when it's like you were about it. You're like, yep, all right, I like this. I like the competitive yeah, atmosphere yeah. of this too. Yeah, really, because I was like, yeah, like I, I'm always asking for one v ones. Like, one, I put one v one and question mark on my clan tag, <laughs> sniper, gun, yeah. like, I do whatever, you know. But whoever was down, whoever was down, you wanted to play yeah. them. And then, what was the first uh, actual land you went to? And what were two? Four or two. Uh, what wait, was that? Like, a, like as an amateur or just? A hey, local? Yeah, it could be your local land. It could be a local yeah, land. Four or two. Or two. First, first local was in World War Two. I went to like two, two or three of them, and I just won every single one of them. So. Okay, you were running things, and then, yeah. uh, I mean. That's when I actually. That's when I remember I. You noticed me in World War Two. Yeah, I think you were playing um, rank play, right? Yeah. On the on the leaderboards. Docks, I remember. Yeah, it was London Docks. Um, I, kind of got recognized. Well, but it's not 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 recognized, but like I got recognition. Yeah, they're like, oh, okay, um, this guy seems pretty good. Yeah. Like he can shoot straight. Like it was you, Crowder, Priesta, and I think I think that's it. You, Crowder, and Priesta were like the main three that kind of like vouch for me and was like, yes, yeah, sir, yes, sir. Look at it. we got, we got an eye for talent. That's what it is. We uh -huh. got the eye for talent. But were you on when you were on the come up like before you became a pro? Did you have someone that you were consistently playing with, like a duo or Mac. team, Mac? So Max always been your guy. 
Yeah. When did you first time. start playing with with Mac? World War Two. We oh, yeah, was World War Two together. I uh, met him. I met him in um, World War Two eights. Just random mm. eights. I was like, wow, this guy's got Yeah, this guy's really good, too. Yeah, 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 like, all right. How old are you? My age? Perfect. Like, come on. <laughs> Let's run it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty crazy. Max, so yeah, you guys have started way, way back, and then yeah. to see all you guys achieve together. But let's talk about that. Like, how did that happen? Like, getting on your first actual pro team, like, who hit you up? What was the plan? Did you have multiple offers? Like, how did that all break down? Yeah, so I first turned 18 um, in February. Uh, I was I had so I had to quit soccer and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Mac turned 18, I believe, in December. Like he was very, very early. Um, not December. I think I think it's like it's early, early in the year, first event, whatever. Um, he played one event, got second, and then got picked up on New York right after. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we picked and Mac then, up. Yep. Yep. And then I turned 18 a few months later, so I was a little late, and I kind of held myself to the same standard as him since we've been coming up together, um, been playing together, a lot. For years so i kind of held myself um to that same standard just as soon as i turn 18 i want to get you want to get on pro team yeah but um i didn't get picked up until i was 20 but i was still like on a subcontract so on a mm -hmm. phase and You're stuff like, like that technically so. a pro but like you yeah. wanted to be a starter you weren't there to yeah. be a sub on a team but like you know it's nice to have a contract early and have some eyes on you but like exactly. of course you want to be a starter so when did exactly. the when did that part all come through uh it came through vanguard so vanguard during um champs of the year cold war mm -hmm. um san phoenix and lamar you know reached out to me at um at champs and then you know they told me you know you got to keep your head on straight and like we really want to give you a chance or whatever and i was like yeah i, I got y'all and i'm here for it and then so yeah that's how kind of i started from there and then we picked up mac and then of course you picked up ag it was like definitely a um a new team we nobody really knew what to expect of the yeah, team. yeah very young team two rookies essentially and then mac who was really good but he only played one season but everyone exactly. knew he was really good and then lamar yeah. like you know the old vet guy on the team yeah and then he also had a season where he got dropped and benched and all that stuff oh yeah too, so. yeah we yeah we benched um, him that's that's stock, that's our stock was low because of that <laughs> as well so yeah um it was really good to actually um be a part of that and kind of go through that process um then we ended up winning event and then you know placing third and fourth at champs yeah two years and yeah now you guys had a pretty crazy ride as a team but what would you say like going through each individual like what did they bring to the table like what was their biggest strength yeah so i would say for mac um for mac he was always kind of um the middleman i think max max very um, he's also, he's also introverted, but he's very funny. So, so I've known him for a long <laughs> yeah. time. So he's very, one of the funniest people I know. Um, and he's just always the middle guy and you can always count on him to actually, you know, like not go too far on either side of the spectrum. So mm -hmm. I think you always need someone like that on a team. Um, kind of be like, kind of always kind of be like the glue, grounded. like that's, yeah, yeah just, the glue guy. That, yeah. So I think that, that, that he brings to the environment is perfect. And then. Obviously, you had me, uh, Mia, Betty, and Amir. Uh, me, me and Amir were pretty um, similar as far as, like, approaching the game, mindset, and stuff like that. So um, we got along pretty well. And then, obviously, Lamar is kind of like the, the teacher. Um, yeah. He's definitely uh, brought a lot of intangibles, definitely more than I um, ever realized, now thinking back on it. And definitely grateful for that and um, the environment that I was put in. But, like... The intangibles that you know he would teach like outside the game it's like you kind of have to like put it in perspective so you can change your approach on how to actually win and be at your best yeah you know, i can't really just expect to just you know show up and things to go your way or whatnot but um and then I, as for ag like i think um having a teammate like him like he gives you so much gas gives you so much um adrenaline during games. No, he's always practice. yelling, bringing that energy, yeah. Yeah, and for someone that I can sit next to every day and that I know that they have that killer instinct like I do, I think it's very, um, very, what's the word? I would say, like, it's, it's re definitely very appreciative just because of the fact that, like, he can hold me to you that You know standard. he's going hard, too? Yeah. Like, you I know, know someone's like, hard, yeah. But he's also holding me to that center. So if I ever, for whatever reason, 
it could be if I'm getting in my own head or if I can just, you know, like not really have that dog, had not have that oomph. Yeah. You know, when you need that oomph, like he's always there, like, yo, like take the fuck over, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, I think like, especially like even in um grand finals, like we played phase grand finals, major three in Toronto and Vanguard. And I don't, I don't think I had one of the best maps. Like I was, I was getting kind of quiet. Um, uh, my intensity wasn't like, it was obviously it was there, but it wasn't as where it needed to be. So we could win. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, before the map loaded up, like, told me to just, just told me to take the fuck over, and then that's exactly what I did. And like, just to hear that, just to just to know that someone else, like, really, really, like, truly has faith in you and your abilities, even when you're not playing at your best. I feel mm -hmm. like that's like all you, all the reassurance you need from your teammates to actually yeah. just be confident in yourself, even if you're not playing the best. And if you can go back to like that Vanguard season. You're talking to yourself as a rookie now. You just joined the team. What would you tell yourself then of what you know now? I think it's more, um, more so the intangibles and the mindset and the and the approach. Mm -hmm. um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah, okay, so fucking noise, Kevin. Um, yeah, so I think it would. I would literally just say the mindset, approach, and the intangibles. I think that's the only thing that I, I lacked as a player, and it's you can't really. Even if I were to tell myself this now, I, st I don't think I'd be able to actually even comprehend back then. I think that's just something that takes time um, for people to grow into. You have to like go through it. Like if, yeah, you actually exactly. have to like do it to yeah. learn what it is. Yeah. It. Yeah. So I think, you know, some people are late bloomers. Some people um, catch on early. Some people don't. Um, I think for me and that aspect of just, the approach mindset and um the mentality shift i think it would uh, i would say i'm kind of a late bloomer in that aspect um i i've always been so good to the point where i just rely on my natural instincts and my talent and mm -hmm. that really only gets you so far in this game in this yeah, game of competitive for sure. crowd. so for sure um I, obviously when it's working everything is going good it's fine but then what do you really do when you face some adversity? So, yeah. um, definitely the facing adversity part, you know, I would tell myself just to, um, be okay with it, you know, just be comfortable with being uncomfortable and also like holding yourself to a certain standard. I think that's very important, especially as a young player, just holding yourself to the highest standard possible and not actually just, okay, yeah, I want to be better, but actually doing everything you can to be better yeah. and finding ways to actually hold yourself to that center and just taking pride. I think that's like one of the most important things because you make that a consistent regimen for yourself. Like a, there's a different, you just think about the game differently and only the greatest players are able to even apply that to like their game. Yeah. And you had something that you have to experience as a player. And obviously people that play sports or whatnot, they could, they could somewhat get the gist of it. But each, each sport is kind of different in their own way. Mm -hmm. But, um, at least for me, I kind of had the basics down, but like to take it to that extra level, I don't think um, I, I didn't have it. And I, honestly, I wish I did because we would have been a lot better. Um, I didn't really, uh, I wasn't really able to really kind of understand and comprehend and actually apply it to my game and to um, my mentality until my third year, which is this year. Yeah. So it took me three years to even comprehend and actually just he actually put a different lens on and my fucking glasses and actually see. So it takes, I think that's, it takes time, but it's good that it happened. And now for you, cause I feel like with some players got to let her out, got to let Luna out real quick. <laughs> yeah. With some players, it might never happen. And like, of course, learning those fundamental things and even knowing that there was, those are a thing that do affect the game. Like, I'm sure there's still some people out there who just want to rely on like gun skill and tell like, Oh, what happened there? Oh, I just lost a gunfight. When like in reality, yeah, sometimes you did lose a gunfight, but more often than not, there's a lot more going into certain plays, certain decisions, then you really see. So, yeah, I mean, you know, you know now, and I mean, I feel like it's shown in your streams and your gameplay this season. It's not just you're consistently playing really well. It's your talent, smarts. You can like see it coming out of you, essentially. Like you can see yeah. like your brain working and like you just being a consistently great player yeah. for the team. <laughs> yeah just le learning how to harness it is very important yeah and I, I would also say i'm probably one of the more talented players in the league at least i'm For a part sure. of that uh, the echelon and 
in, in the, out of these 48 players. So I think just like the ability to harness it is very, very, very important. And obviously some people are more natural than others, but I mean, if you have the talent, then I think that, I mean, you're just selling yourself short if you don't yeah. make it to that end goal. Don't give it, yeah, don't give it your all. It takes two years, three years, or, you know, X amount of time. Yeah. <sighs> so we got to talk about champs. Not this one, don't worry. Mm -hmm. But some of the other crazy champs, because your Seattle team would always match up against FaZe. I feel like every tournament, you guys would play them. I had champs in Vanguard. You guys played them. Was that winner's finals? Yeah. Winner's finals. How and why did you guys always just have the most insane matches? Like, I feel like it was a guaranteed game five and the yeah. craziest banger of a series every time you played them. Like, why did you guys match up so well versus them? I think it was just matchups, honestly. I think we matched up really well um, versus them. Uh, versus them and I would say LAT. I don't think we really ever lost LAT like that. So um, we had really good matchups versus them, but they also had a really good matchup versus us too. Mm. Um, I think it just came down to the the most minute decisions and playmaking abilities that each of us had and just being on the same page. Um, I do think now, like, if I would run it back and kind of, like, spawn in again in that moment, I do think it would be different just because of the player I am now. But I do think um, in those moments of losing, and it was always so close. Yeah. And they would come out on top. They beat us twice. Same map, same round 11. <laughs> you like, know what I mean? So right, yeah, literally it's, one round. It's, it's kind of just like those half second um, predictions and making plays that didn't go our way, not because of something that was unlucky. It was just something that our communication was off. Or yeah. we didn't know someone was there. We didn't have good enough info or whatnot and i think that's like the most important thing now even looking back on it that like the a communication is a big thing and yeah. i would say my, my first year competing i didn't have good comms um i didn't think to even have good comms which is a weird thinking back on it and i actually, You're like I, what I, was I, I thinking back then like yeah right it's, like, it's I, so I, easy I remember, nowadays yeah 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 especially because there's so much like COD comes down to milliseconds, right? So like it'd be a half a second too late, half a second too early. And there's so many bad, good timings that happen in the game. And I think just being able to recognize them and just to have a thought that it's a capability, that's the most important thing. And I didn't understand that at all. Um, I, I, I got the, you know, the gist of it later on. But yeah. Yeah, like just it, it was always so close just because of matchups. I think Mac, Mac matched up really good against FaZe. And, and Mac would always just have these series where he would go off, just draw 40 and a hard point. Yeah. Like he would just like take over some he maps. Would like, he, he, he would be like a sleeper takeover. And then obviously me and AJ are doing our thing as well. Yeah. And then like I think. Um, then Lamar, he was getting in the hill. Yeah, he was just getting the hill <laughs> while we were just doing our thing. But yeah. I, think, I think mainly our um, Mac and AJ matched up well against them. Yeah. But I think that's just like kind of like the main thing that we, were all, we would either beat them or it would just be really close. But I mean, they ended up getting the best of us. So. Happens. They took a, they took a lot of money from us. I'll be honest. They, <laughs> took, they took a lot of money. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. But after Vanguard, I mean, you guys had a pretty successful season. You had a, co a couple seconds, thirds. You won an event. Uh, after that, were were there any thoughts of making a roster change, or was it just like you guys are just locked in for next year? For MW2? Yeah, going in MW2. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're definitely locked. Yeah, you're just um, like, all right, let's like, make no, this actually, even no, better. No, 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 no. I think AJ is supposed to join a different team. Really? I think AJ is going to join FaZe or Optic, one of the two. He was going to join one of the two, but it didn't end up happening for whatever reason. And then um, <clears throat> going into the year, uh, that just kind of compromised our team a bit. Yeah, happens. All the you hear so many different things from different people and everything, yeah. so it like yeah, major then people one, don't know what to think. Where, yeah, like Lamar was gonna get dropped for Dashy, and yeah, like he just was to go to Optic. He didn't end up going got didn't end up going to Optic. Yeah, and then I think just from there, kind of our team, team morale and team like camaraderie dropped dropped a bit. Was that what you say was like your the biggest issue during the MW2 season? Yeah, I think that was the biggest issue, and then obviously like me not. Um, being as good as I am now, not 
not as far mm-hmm, not as far as um, like, like gun skill or whatever yeah, just, yeah like just a development yeah just like development bombs I think that, yeah. yeah exactly and i think i think if i had the mindset i did now um i think what the biggest difference was just the efficiency aspect of it like i still had the killer mentality the that dog um just playing with that with that dog but mm-hmm. like there's a difference between kind of playing with that dog and then being inefficient yeah so um just being efficient in practice and efficient in game plans and efficient in preparing and how we're um meshing well as a team i think was uh I wouldn't say non-existent but it was definitely wasn't what it is now so i think that hindered us a lot yeah and, and, and maybe maybe it wouldn't have maybe maybe you know what i'm saying but i think me personally if um i was better in that aspect i think that like i could have been like the turning point because it was just kind of like ag and lamar saying a lot of things and i would i would chime in here and there like i would always be talking but like i didn't really um i, f- I, f- I feel like if i had that um, mentality shift that like it would just cause like a different um team morale yeah and in, in, in it as itself so well listen you're only in your third year you've learned a lot of course if anyone could go back from where they are now they're gonna do it much better then because they know they've experienced right. stuff they know so like it's good that you're taking accountability you're learning and stuff but it's not the end all be all because you still have mm-hmm. such a long career ahead of you so it's just good that you're learning early because like to even learn this after a third year or during the third year like you saw what it's created for you uh, right. with the championship, top two at champs. Of course, you want to win every tournament, but it created a successful season for your team and yourself individually. And then I'm sure you picked up many things along th- during this season as well that you're going to carry over into the next. Like, we're going to help you achieve more things. So, but it's really good that like you noticed it on your own and right. like, you're like, okay, I need to work on this or I need to make sure I still do this and build on this to get to the next level. Right. Which is impressive. Very impressive. And um, then, you know, the team broke up after MW2. A couple of players went different ways. Pred went to Optic. Uh, Accuracy went to um, Rocker. Mac stepped down for, to competing for a little bit, but he said, uh-huh. his rumors already might be coming back. So that would be, be great to see Mac back in action. Yeah. Um, but would you say, like, you have a, like, a real rivalry with Pred? Like, it's like one of those rivalries, like a brother, like two brothers growing up. Yeah. And they just have that like rivalry. Definitely, I, I feel like it's like that with all my teammates, my my past teammates, yeah, Lamar as well. It's the same thing, but um, since Amir is on a better team, I think it's a lot more safe to say that our rivalry is a lot means a, a bit more just because yeah. it's optic in New York. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely have that rivalry. It, it's definitely there. I mean, after we lost champs, I mean, next day Amir is calling me, FaceTiming me, just <laughs> flexing his ring finger. So I mean, yeah, it's like. <laughs> I knew I was gonna hear. Well, I'm not gonna hear the end of it. I'm probably gonna hear it every day. But listen, there's um, only one thing you could do. Just come back, and, and that's fight. beat him at next champs. Exactly. Like a exactly. tournament of t- tournaments, the majors are great. If you beat him, you know he's still gonna be down. You're gonna be up, yeah. but you gotta get your get back with the ring. You gotta right. get your get back with the ring. But now that's still good. That like you guys could still be cool after teammates, because uh, like essentially you guys change you you change each other's lives together. Like yeah. you catapulted yourselves into great situations with new teams, top teams in the league. And then of course you're still getting better as players and still some of the best players in the game. So it's cool to see like you guys still like look back and like you still talk with each other and everything. You're still friends, which is good. It's good to see. But after that, you're like going into the roster mania. How did you end up on New York? Was there other teams that were, or other offers on the table? And how'd you ultimately end up deciding to go to New York? decided to go to them just because i mean obviously they won the world championship before yeah that's true so <laughs> no no really no other team um that were on that type of caliber yeah really offered me so um lower teams obviously did offer me they, they even if it was one money i didn't take it just because of the fact that like i knew that for my legacy it'd be better going to of course so, getting a better roster more opportunity yeah. to win Right. Be better, right. and then you know, just can build, build your name up. Ended up choosing them. Yeah, and then of course you got a team with Hydra. Was the MVP last year. I think he won Controller Player of the Year. I think too or some. Something he, like he that. He won maybe. that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure he won that um, from the MW2 season. Everyone knows how good Hydra is as a player, but he's 
you know, we don't really get that many Hydra streams or interviews or anything ever. Uh, so what would you say it's like behind the scenes teaming with Hydra and like Paco? Like, what have you learned from him? Is he a great teammate? Like, how is he easy to work with? Like, what have you, what's your experience with Paco? Yeah, my experience with Paco has been fucking wonderful. Definitely more than I expected. I knew he was always great. I knew he was good. knew he got MVP. Um, but just to kind of pick his brain and be with him firsthand and how he thinks about the game and his mindset towards the game, I think um, it's that's why he's so good mm. as what he what he does. Um, I know he doesn't like streaming just because I mean he doesn't really want to teach and you know he just you know some people they just they want to be professional and just play the game. Um, you don't really see um, there's some athletes who are the top of their their respected sport and you know they really don't they don't you don't really see them on skims or like you know like doing a bunch of ads <laughs> yeah of stuff. course so like they just want yeah to, you know, they just want to go there and hoop or go exactly, there and play the exactly, game exactly right so i think yeah. that's kind of similar to him but as far as playing with him i mean it, it, his point of view i mean there's only there's only two players that can really replicate how he plays and i mean it's, it's him and shots yeah so, him and shots have like I similar think, looking point of views but yeah different so, from everyone that's ever played exactly right so i think like really looking at what they're doing really puts it in perspective of how okay like people are some people are just different yeah like there's no like you can try your best to replicate it <laughs> yeah I can try my best to move like him or but in reality, like it, they're just different. Yeah, it's just and second that, nature to them now. Like it's you know instinct. what I mean. That that's just that's that's a gift that they're born with, and not everybody. No, no, not and nobody can do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, except for those not, two. Not every, no, yeah. nobody can replicate that. Nobody can be like that. And yeah, that really just puts in a perspective of like other sports, like Messi or like Kyrie Irving or like just like people who have their their gifts like Steph Curry he shoots amazingly like Kyrie Irving his handles right it's like some people who are just like that you can really tell like wow like they, they, they're they're just gifted and I sometimes God made you better and that's okay <laughs> yeah you know what I mean like at the end of the day sometimes God made you better and that's just what it is and you have to accept that and it's been a been a pleasure playing alongside him um I love the way he thinks about the game love the way he treats practice and um goes about playing the game and preparing for the game I think that um, I, I realized that he's someone that I could really, really count on mentally um, very, very early on just because of um, his uh, upbringing. We have like similar upbringing, we both played sports, have um, similar uh, childhood, you know, mm -hmm. parents, whatever. Um, so I, I think that like just starting off that with him and really understanding and just talking to him about like his life I and mean, he's from a whole different country so yeah just to get to know him as a person and how his upbringing was and um his struggles and where he came from as a kid i think that that really just told me everything that i really needed to know about the guy um yeah like i mean you, you see it for itself i mean he's probably you know you ask me you know, who's the greatest player in the fucking world i mean i'm gonna say him and yeah i mean uh, honestly that's just what i, what, what I think yeah so what i think and yeah like I, I tell him every day like you're the best player in the game and um it kind of there's a definitely a part of me where i very very prideful on the subject because i want to be the best and yeah. like, i want to consider myself as the best but it's like it gets to a point where it's like you just have to accept greatness like you just have to kind of just yeah you kind of have to just accept it you know and i think that's like kind of like is his role as a player and what he does on the map, his impact on um, a team, any team he goes on, um, just on the map in general, out of all, all the eight people, I think that is something that is very, very, very hard to replicate. And not many people could really even do that. So, I mean, I, I, it's just, I mean, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of it. Um, I know I'm probably never going to team with someone like him again. So um, just trying to enjoy every day with the guy, you know? Of course, of course. But listen, he's a sub player. You could be the best sub ever, but you could still be the greatest they are ever. It's like people are good at different things. Very hard though, Dylan. Very hard. It's very great. hard for an airport to win MVP. Oh very, yeah, very, I mean it's hard. it's Call of Duty's a SMG, a sub player's game, yeah. and that doesn't mean the subs always better. Sometimes there's games where the ARs are stronger, but SMG players 
more impactful. A great them. SMG player is much more impactful than a great AR player and they control of the game. Your team will only go as far as your SMGs will really take you. As an AR, you could do some things, you know, win your team a couple matches here and there, but you really, it's so much more difficult to catapult your team into that position as an AR rather than a sub. Because when you're a sub, you're controlling a pace of the game, you're doing all this, and uh, it's just, you have a lot more control over how everything plays out as a sub yeah. player. So that's why you always go for a great sub. If you had to pick one between a great sub and a great AR, you always go for a great sub. Um, and then we've noticed with New York, like you guys are always coming up with like crafty new ideas, nade spots, crazy wall bangs, a bunch of like nerdy strats that are really good. Uh, is that something that they've always done? Like since you first joined, you guys were always doing that. Like, is that just the New York um, mindset and playbook? Yeah, I think it's always something that they've done. We didn't do it major one. Um, we got 12th major one. We actually had good practice leading up to major one. So we didn't really do it as much, but um we did have a discussion about it how um they were doing that before and at the start of this year we weren't really doing it that much so they said get back um, on get back on yeah, point like so we had to get back on it um i think it's very it's, it's definitely something that every team should do but um if we're not consistent in other areas and ultimately like those nerdy things that we were figuring out really don't matter yeah. so yeah i think that's where kind of i'm at with it um I'm all for the nerdy stuff and all for doing, you know, wall bangs and crazy nade spots and crazy spots. But if we can't, you know, do the little things right and do the other things that we need to do to win, I mean, ultimately it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, of course. You want like the base game plan and foundation and then, you know, throw a couple of those nerdy strats, nade yeah. spots, wall bangs out there. Yeah. So that helps you get a first blood or an extra kill, some more map control. And that can completely change the game for you guys, make the game easier by giving you a advantage in the situation that you're in so it's yeah. definitely really good and then you never know it could also check the other team too they're like what the fuck we just got double naded across the map or wall bang like this and it's yeah. like messing with their heads mentally too it's like oh we can't go to this bomb site anymore we're just getting wall banged so it could definitely affect the other teams as well um and then you guys were pretty solid except for major one you know you had a little mishap at major one after that you guys were consistently top four top three top two and then until major four was there something that clicked during major four right before major four like going into it did you know it was going to be a good weekend mm, i knew we had a chance um at least for me uh my mindset about it or just like the way that i think about it i didn't really want to come in too confident i i, I still think that we could have won major three as well um major two what we got third i think yeah, major two, we got third. Yeah, 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 we got third, fourth, second. No, no, third, third, fourth, first, second, I believe. And major two, I don't, I didn't really expect to get like third, but I mean, we still did, which is good. And then um, major three, uh, I think we should have won, but we made the same mistakes that we make in practice, which came to bite us in the ass. So, yeah. Um, but as far as like, me going into the weekend i really didn't think we were had a for sure chance to win it just because of um our, our scrims have never been good mm. the whole, throughout the whole year and that's kind of been that's kind of been a thing for them as just as it be even before i got there they weren't that good at scrims they're always way better on land or whatnot so um it's kind of kind of hard no it is hard to definitely have confidence in like being on the same page all this uh, every single time yeah and on where there's you just everyone's an autopilot when you know in practice it's not really like that all the time so um due to that inconsistency i really didn't think that okay like we're for sure getting first like if i was phase then i would be like, okay we're for sure getting first but um it's it's kind of weird just because the fact that like you're on either side of the spectrum you could be really really good in scrims and you go yeah. to game day and then, then you bottle it up and you don't end up winning even though in scrims you know how to do it and then on the opposite side of the spectrum whereas don't really do the right stuff in scrims it's not consistent all the time and then you go to an event and then magically it's like there it works everything you know just I mean? clicks so like, like it's just yeah it's weird because then you go then you go back afterwards and like you don't do it and then it's like i thought we knew how to do this right yeah. so um e e either side of the spectrum is a little bit weird um i just think that lan and traveling and playing in front of a crowd just brings out a whole different game um like we we went out of I think ten hard point 
win streak or something like that. We didn't lose a hard point. Yeah. Hard point's been like our worst um, game mode. So I think we just ended up catching catching flow and mm -hmm. um, I think that's kind of all, all a team really needs to just really win just because especially the teams in the top four, everyone's good, everyone's competitive. So um, whoever really just, just yeah. has flow, you yeah. know, it's kind of probably um, – Whoever just takes that stride is probably going to win it, but I do think like Bay's probably is probably the most consistent in practice, so they probably have the best chance every single time. So, mm. um, yeah. And then uh, of course you guys went to champs, got second. Of course you wanted that ring, but still a pretty good placing. Uh, I mean you beat some good teams. You pushed off the distance uh, the first series. What would you say about like COD Champs as an event as a whole? Like, was that the loudest event you've ever played at? You think? Yeah, for sure, the loudest event. I I, I told you yesterday I was using white noise. I never use white noise in my headset. So <laughs> uh, that Champs event was the first event where I had to um, use white noise, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, Go to show how loud the crowd it, really was. Yeah, like but again, we choked the first two maps and then won the third map. So realistically, we should have been up three zero, but um that's just something that you know you really can't teach you just kind of yeah. have to capitalize on when you have an advantage in a situation so um and if you don't then ultimately that's going to be the result so of course um, and on top of that i do think like the crowd is just gassing up optic every play so yeah um they're just going to be playing better and better and they're building off that energy and momentum exactly right. and just so, like they're going to roll with it yeah, so the other team, whoever's playing, you know, them in a grand final or, or any match just really has to not, they have to make twice as less mistakes. And if they do make mistakes, they have to try it twice as hard or do yeah. twice as much to actually get out of it. Because, I mean, basically you're finding two people and, you know, it's one guy. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's, 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 that's really what it, it comes down to. And we weren't able to really uh, fight back. <sighs> yeah, that was crazy. I went there Saturday and it was so loud and I can it only was, imagine right? yeah. Sunday because like that was just yeah. Saturday, which was so yeah. crazy. But like yeah. Sunday, whew, I can only imagine how crazy it was. Like the wristbands were dope, how they were lighting up. So you'd see whoever, whichever team won after the map, it would light up that color. So like the arena looks oh, sick. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, on the wristbands. Or if you went to the bathroom, you know, it would light up with the color. You're like, oh shit, this team, New York won the map. Yeah, like, well, it, that's really cool. Yeah, fuck? that was actually yeah, one of the coolest that, things that I think should be a thing at more events now because that's that's just yeah. kind of dope um oh you get it yeah oh my god you're so look at that reaction time that's that young man reaction time right yeah. there generational generational um so this year you went from seattle the past two seasons into a new new york team what have like you learned as like an individual being just thrown into a new environment essentially that i think um life's bigger than video games I think I also learned that it's very, very easy to get caught up in the moment. And I think that's one of the uh, one of the things that I've at the start of this year that I realized that I just need to make sure that I do. Um, it's very easy to approach the game when you're when you're young. It's just like, oh, this is my livelihood. This is my life. This is the only thing I care about. And I just think thinking like that to a certain extent, kind of like makes everything blurry around you and you really don't realize what's kind of going on yeah. in your life because you're so focused on one thing, which is good that you're focused on it. But ultimately when you're not going to be a pro forever. And I, I think that life is yeah. much, much bigger than um, video games. So I think just taking myself out the moment and just, you know, looking around what I have, you know, how far I've came and yeah, um, the people that I have supporting me and that, and that are around me, I think that's something that um, you just take a step back and be grateful for and really just, um, yeah, like I said, take yourself out the moment. I think that's like one of the most important things because, you know, you get too um, invested. I think your life is just strictly determined on if you win or lose. Yeah. And you're not going to win every single time. So I think just operating on that mindset in life, I think that's just it's going to make things just way 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 harder for you and it's really 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 easy to like get in that cycle yeah and it's hard to get out of it too once you're in it so it's like you like you said you're gonna win some you're gonna lose some just like being able to move on learn yeah. from that and move on and just become yeah. better for the future 
that's that's definitely important instead of just one loss takes you out for two weeks and now you're losing full yeah. um but outside of game what are some things that you just like to do what helps you just what makes you you dante what do you like outside of cod outside of cod i mean i, I love living life i love traveling um love hanging out with friends you know i think mm -hmm. uh one of the things that i started doing recently is um just uh going on drives again going on drives is the best thing yeah um i used to do that i don't do anymore um but um I've, I've, i'm the only child for like the first 12 years of my life so i was always alone so i'm um, just enjoying my own company and uh going for walks going for runs i mean i have a dog now so it's easy to do that but yeah now you're um, now you're a dad you got a dog yeah, so <laughs> exactly right so um just just enjoying my own company and traveling and just seeing the world and stuff like that i think that is i got the top of my um bucket list to do just to enjoy life and yeah live as stress free as possible and yeah i, I think that's like one thing that as, as i'm getting older um you know, being a son, brother, um, cousin, um, all that stuff. I, th I think that's something that I've been uh, learning uh, as, as far as like just uh, this year. Yeah. And I know you say you're going on drives and stuff. I know you're a big car guy. What would you say your ultimate dream car is? Ultimate dream car? I'd probably say um, it probably have to be like a gt3 porsche it's something of that something of that like a bracket like I want <laughs> Ferrari, on that. yeah you know like porsche ferrari <laughs> any of those i think i think all of those are really really nice i mean i imagine like i, I want to have a fucking i want to have a car show in my garage like oh, yeah you want to have a, a, a whole lineup show. you want to have a yeah, whole exactly line right. of cars I, you just gotta gta yeah just gotta win a champ a couple tournaments champs a couple times make some good investments and then you start adding the collection. You start adding yeah. the collection. Yeah, but GTR, Porsche, all, all that stuff. I, I want all of it. Ones that, cars I like to go fast and you yeah. know look good while doing it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and if you had to build a team, mm -hmm. one player from each of the other top three teams. So it's you. You got to pick a team from a player from Toronto, Phase, Optic. What's your roster? I think I would say me. Well, no, yeah, you're in it. You're in it. You're already you're in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So me, Simp, uh, me, Simp. Who's completing the Shotzi. sub duo? Okay, Shotzi, Simp. And hey, who's your AR duo? Mm, mm, I'll go Scrap. Scrap? Sib, Shotzi, car. wait, wait, wait. Sib, Shotzi, Simp, Scrap. scrap. Yeah. Wait, low key. Uh, some of the best players in the game have S in front of their name. I'm not attaining my name. I'm just about to throw an S in front of my name now. Yeah, right. That's gonna just make me crack. That's gonna make me crack it again. Hold on, I might need to just do that. Hold on, that might be the meta. I need to start playing Claw. I don't know. I'll just switch it up. Start playing Claw and stuff. Yeah. So I hit my YYs and be looking all good. Don't play Claw. It's kind of insane. I'll be honest. Nah, nah, it's good. Nah, I love my scuff, man. I love my scuff. No claw for me. No claw for me. <laughs> but um, what are you looking forward to in Black Ops 6? I know there's some stuff we've seen, some leaks recently, movement and everything. What are, like, what are you personally looking forward to? And do you like Treyarch games? Yeah, yeah. I think that Treyarch's my best game. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably the best player, at least individually, in Treyarch games. So yeah. the fact that it's just Treyarch, I think that like, gives me... Just, yeah, I love it. I love Chark at the end of the day. Gives you that much more excited for like yeah. the new COD release. Yeah. So it's just just Chark in itself is just all I need, <laughs> and obviously like to be able to compete. And yeah, yeah I mean that, that's that's all I look forward to. Just having that um, a competition. Of course. And I know that you know once I retire, that's not going to be something that I'm going to be able to replicate or actually get back at. You know, oh, never. Being at the highest. That level feeling. At, yeah. Yeah. So. That's just something that I'm trying to um, enjoy. And yeah, just don't take it for granted. Of, yeah, even if I lose, win or lose, I um, I, I still try my best to enjoy it just because yeah. I know that I'm going to look back at it and this is all I'm going to remember. And this, these are the memories I'm going to carry with me. You know, I'm going to tell my, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, stuff that I'm going to tell them. And 
I'm gonna have to tape to show them. You know, they're gonna, you're gonna, all right, pull up. Where's the remote? Give me the remote. Here's the YouTube video Seattle Surge versus Optic MW2 (laughs) Sib 1v3. Right, right. exactly. So, there's your dad um, right there. (laughs) I mean, even, even, even losing to AG at champs, I mean, it's something that, um, obviously I hate losing and you know, I, I very much so think about it every day. I mean, they, at the end of the day, like that's something that like you got a chance to be a part of and yeah, then you got, you had an opportunity to, to do something great. And even though if you fall up short, I still think that it's, it's still a memory that's going to be held within you forever. And it's, yeah, that's what that's, I think that's kind of the reality of it. And that's just something that you need to embrace. And like I said, like when I retire, I'm not going to be able to find this feeling again. So, just going to an, another year of being able to play and um, especially on track. I think that's just it too. For sure. Grateful for, it. for sure. I mean, there's no feeling like being on that main stage, winning a match, going and fist bumping the other team while they're all down and you're smiling in their faces yeah. or of course winning a tournament too. And like just the, all the work you put in coming to fruition and like you just raising that check, raising that trophy, making that money. And like, it's just, there's no feeling like it. So that's definitely why everyone wants to get to this level to just achieve that feeling. Just to have a little look of it. Yeah, just to just to get a taste of it. But <laughs> the good part is sometimes you like you said, you lose, but you still have a chance to write your story. So you got next season, EWC coming up and everything else, Black Ops Six, all the games to compete in. But Dante, that's gonna be it for me and all my questions. I appreciate you coming in, taking the sure, time out of your busy you. day to come and talk and then you know, have the community learn more about you and uh, of course have Luna. Your, your yeah, baby sure. in she's the background. Right here. I don't know what she, she's doing. She's, she's vibing. She's, she's, she's vibing. Hey, look, I look at hey, what's up, Luna? <laughs> Hi. Listen, Hi. all the people that are listening on Spotify and other podcast platforms, you need to go to the YouTube channel so you can see Dante's beautiful puppy. She's just chilling in the back. She's been here the whole time, pretty much. She's been active, though. She's been walking outside, hopping on the couch. But you made it to the end. You guys are all real ones. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, another sure. episode of Stay Attached Podcast done. Dante, thank you so much for coming on. Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we just close the show out? Um, I mean, honestly, I, I'll give a shout out to you. You know, I really expected um, a, some another question talking about, you know, like what, you know, who would you want to team with? You know, I was prepared <laughs> to say you, but you know, you just, you well, I'm trying to keep that bullet. low key. I'm trying to keep you, that low you didn't key. Give me the bullet to bite, but you know it's fine. You I'm not trying to give we'll, Tactical we'll, Rab we'll, too much intel this early in the off season. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, shout, shout out my man Dale for putting me on. I, I loved every, an honor. Every every second of this. Um, it was a great dinner last podcast. night too. It was a great dinner well, last night. Very Boy. very good steak. I had some 45 <laughs> dry aged steak. Let me tell you, it was. Yep. Good. Celebrating with the boys. We got yep. Lamar out there, AG, Pred, Shotzi, Stocksman, everyone. So, you know, it was a good time. Even though we're on different teams now, they're on different teams now, we still find the time to get together and you still enjoy life, celebrate, and, you know, have have good times. Yes, sir. Luna, I wish I could give you some. Pe- I think you can Thank hear you me. Bye. Bye, Luna. Bye. Bye. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> All right. Peace out, everyone. Later. Oh, wait. Shit. I got to switch this. Then I end the recording. Oh, that's what I'm hearing.